Today we continue in our sermon series as we are considering the history and theology of some of our favorite hymns. Today's hymn is Blessed Assurance. It is a favorite of many United Methodists. In fact, according to scholar Carlton Young, it is among the 10 most popular hymns sung by United Methodists. It has been in our hymnal since 1889, only 16 years after its composition. And it has been included in over 900 hymnals across numerous denominations. As I was deciding on hymns to include in our series this year, I was surprised that we hadn't yet considered Blessed Assurance or any of the hymns written by Fanny Crosby. She wrote over 8,000 in her lifetime which means at one point in her life, she was writing an average of three hymns a week. Seven of her hymns are included in our United Methodist hymnal. Fanny Crosby was a lifelong Methodist and her hymns have greatly influenced Methodism for years. She wrote hymns such as, To God Be the Glory, Jesus, keep me near the cross. Pass me not, O gentle Savior, and I am thine, O Lord. And so let's spend some time this morning thinking about this composer and her hymn, Blessed Assurance. Fanny Crosby was born in 1820 in New York, and at only six weeks of age, she developed an eye infection. Unfortunately, it was improperly treated, and she spent the rest of her life blind, only able to see shadows of light and dark. Fanny lived her life in service to others, not only through her hymn writing, but in her everyday actions. She taught at the New York Institute for the Blind. She helped people during the cholera epidemic in 1849. She addressed Congress to advocate for education for the blind. And she worked in New York's Bowery Missions, a ministry that is still operational today, serving the homeless and hungry and those experiencing other crises. According to scholars such as Robert Morgan and Michael Hahn, Fanny Crosby didn't like receiving recognition for her achievements. She published under pen names over 200 of them. And she preferred to remain anonymous in the crowds of people during revivals and church services while they sang her hymns. Fanny was a gifted composer writing her first hymn at the age of six, but her hymn writing took off around age 41. She was only paid $2 for each hymn, which even at that time wasn't very much. I think today it would be about $62. And therefore she lived much of her life in poverty. As a blind composer, she would think about the hymns, formulate them in her head, and then dictate them to someone to write down. She had an incredible memory. As scholar Whitney Doe writes, she could recite entire books of the Bible from memory. One of Fanny's friends was Phoebe Palmer Knapp. She and her husband were prominent people in New York. Her husband was the founder of Metropolitan Life Insurance and received a nomination for mayor of New York City. Phoebe was a gifted musician and composer, writing over 500 hymns in her lifetime. One day in 1873, Fanny was visiting Phoebe, and Phoebe played a tune that she had composed. And she asked Fanny, what does the melody say to you? Immediately, Fanny replied, 
Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. The rest of the words to this hymn followed soon after. The text of Blessed Assurance focuses on heaven, upon what is to come. The words anticipate the day when we might achieve Christian perfection. Fanny was a good Methodist after all. The words of her hymn invite us to imagine what we will experience one day. Fanny's words are full of imagery and invitation as we sing, Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. And later, visions of rapture now burst on my sight with angels descending. And finally, I in my Savior am happy and blessed. It is obvious from these words that Fanny experienced the assurance of God's grace in her life. In our scripture today, we also gain an understanding of sanctification, that is, of experiencing God's presence in our lives and moving towards a holy life. In this conclusion to Paul's first letter to the church at Thessalonica, Paul names a few attributes of God that we can experience. Paul writes, May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely. The God of peace. As I mentioned last week, what we hope to experience is God's shalom, God's peace. We experience shalom when we are in a right relationship with God and our neighbors. When we live in God's peace, we understand that God is present with us no matter our circumstances. It is a sense of wholeness and completeness. Paul continues, The one who calls you is faithful. Faithful comes from the Greek word pistos, And this word indicates that God is worthy of trust. God is reliable. God is loyal. We can wholeheartedly rely on God. And finally, Paul writes, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Now, this was a fairly normal conclusion to a letter, and that familiarity can mean we overlook the significance of it. Grace. It is the Greek word charis. It is God's favor extended to us. It is a gift that the God of all creation gives to us. It is kindness and blessing. It is forgiveness and mercy. I think Fanny Crosby encompassed these attributes of God in her hymn when she wrote, Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. Now Paul's letter includes more than just attributes of God. He also wrote about our response to this assurance of God's love. He encouraged the Thessalonians and us to respond in a variety of ways. Paul writes, Be at peace among yourselves. See that none of you repays evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to all. When we experience evil at the hands of another person or business or entity, our response is often less than gracious. But Paul here reminds us to do good to all, not just to those who do good to us, not just to those who have a similar perspective or way of life, but he says to all. We should strive to always do the right thing to every person, and when we do this, we contribute to making this a more peaceful world. Paul continues, Rejoice always. 
Fanny made this a central point in her hymn as we sing the refrain, praising my Savior all the day long. Now it's difficult to rejoice always. There are times when we simply don't see how we can be in a joyful state of mind, where we are too busy getting stuff done. It can be hard to stop and offer praise to God and to appreciate the small things. But we try, and God understands. Paul then writes, pray without ceasing. I don't think Paul meant for us to spend the entirety of our lives on our knees in conversation with God. There are numerous ways we can pray, and that is just one of them. I was reading this week, and I came across an article about the march from Selma to Montgomery led by Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. during the Civil Rights era. And one of the people marching was Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel. And when he returned home, he was asked, did you find much time to pray while you were in Selma? He responded, I prayed with my feet. I love this idea. He, it indicates that all of our actions can be a prayer to God. When we walk in creation, we can be praying. When we work in the food bank, our feet are praying. This sentiment indicates that our actions speak to God. I believe it is when we live our lives in this way that we can pray without ceasing. Paul then writes, give thanks in all circumstances. To give thanks to God in all circumstances means that we continually remember God's presence and God's goodness. We recognize that God created this world and God created us. All that we have comes from God and for that we should be thankful. There's one more part of Fanny's hymn that I want to consider as we conclude today. I want us to look at the chorus. We already mentioned the phrase about praising God, but the other phrase is also important. We sing, this is my story, this is my song. What is your story? What story are you singing to the world? Is it a story of joy and prayer and thanks to God? Is it a story of peace and doing good? A story of being your best, the best neighbor, the best friend, the best person that you can be? As she wrote this hymn, Fanny Crosby told her story, her assurance of God's love to the world. Think about your story this week and share it with the world. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.